don't sing. Spring, 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 spring. There is one thing that I do religiously every spring that I rarely see other homeowners do. This process has helped my lawn become thicker, greener, and saves me money on my water bill every year. The great thing about the process I'm gonna show you is that there are no fertilizers or chemicals involved, and it only has a one-time cost. After that, it's just all manual labor. Today, I'm gonna to teach you how to dethatch your lawn. This process is extremely satisfying to do, and it's actually one of my favorite things to do when it comes to lawn care. If you've never heard of dethatching, that's okay, because I'm gonna show you what it is and talk about the benefits that it has on your lawn. I'm also gonna talk about the differences between dethatching, scarifying, and power raking, because those are commonly confused, especially here on YouTube. If you've watched any amount of videos on YouTube about lawn care in the past, you'll know that all the nicest lawns on YouTube all dethatch their grass. That's because dethatching has so many benefits to it. So what is dethatching? Dethatching is the process of removing the dead layer of grass, roots, and other debris that accumulates between the soil and the grass blades. Now some thatch is normal, but a thick layer of thatch can prevent water, air, and nutrients from getting to the roots of the grass which can lead to a thin and unhealthy lawn. The dead material can also block your grass's ability to spread. So how do we get that layer of thatch out of there? Well, you really have three options. You can dethatch, you can scarify slash verticut, or you can power rake. All three of them will get thatch out to a certain degree, but some accomplish certain things that the others don't. Let me try to explain. So before I even get into the different types and people start losing their minds saying that I'm saying something wrong, I just want to point out that different companies call these tools different things. For example, Allet and Swardman call this tool a scarifier, while Sunjo and Greenworks call it a dethatcher. Allet calls this tool a dethatcher, while Sunjo calls it a scarifier, and Swardman calls it a verticutter. I know this sounds super confusing, but I should be able to help you understand what tool is used for what by the end of this video. Just to make things easy, I'm going to go by what the Sunjo and Greenworks calls them because they are the most affordable to homeowners, and it's more likely that you'll own one of these machines rather than the expensive ones. Jesus. So first, let's talk about dethatchers. When it comes to dethatchers, there are three different types. A manual dethatcher, a pull-behind dethatcher, or a power dethatcher. When it comes to manual dethatchers, they usually look something like this. They usually come with adjustable tines on each side of the rake. One set of curved tines and another set that are straight. These tines dig far enough into the ground to scrape out dead grass and thatch, but not deep enough to damage the roots of the grass. If you have a lawn around a thousand square feet or smaller, this could be right for you, but anything bigger than that and you're just asking for pain. These things are backbreakers as it takes a lot of time and a lot of work to even cover a small area with these tools. I would not recommend these to very many people. I mean, this is definitely harder to pull than I was expecting. I don't know why I was expecting that as it goes all the way through the graph. But man, this is, this is oddly satisfying. Though this, this really is backbreaking. I couldn't imagine doing this for hours. The next option is a pull behind you, Thatcher. You can pull these behind your four wheeler or lawn tractor and it will pull up dead material and thatch as you drive around your lawn. This is by far the least amount of work because you aren't pushing or raking anything manually. But I will say this is probably the least effective of the three. The reason why is because these tines are spaced out by quite a bit and while you're driving around the lawn it's going to be impossible to get perfect coverage. You'll have to maneuver around objects and make strategic turns on your property line so your pattern will end up being kind of random and all over the place. But if you have a large property, this is gonna be by far the most realistic option for you. When it comes to power dethatchers, they are much less work than manual dethatchers. Most of these machines are electric and come with interchangeable cartridges. The dethatching cartridge usually has tines that look something like this. You can set these tines to a desired height to rake over the grass. This setting is essentially how aggressive you want the machine to be. The goal of the power dethatcher is to get out the top layer of thatch and any debris sitting on top of the lawn like dead grass and leaves. This would be the best tool for getting out a lot of dead grass and small amounts of thatch, like under a half of an inch. But don't underestimate the power of these machines because they get out a ton of material. There is one crappy thing that comes with these electric dethatchers though, and that is the power cord. 
It sometimes becomes a pain, but if you're constantly moving away from the cord as you're dethatching, you shouldn't have too much of an issue. If the power cord's gonna be an absolute deal breaker for you, they also have battery powered options, but they do cost about $50 more. The second option is the Scarify or VertiCut. The difference between the Scarify attachment and the dethatching attachment is that instead of using small, thin tines, it uses large blades to cut deep into the ground, leaving small trenches. This attachment would be used to get out large amounts of thatch that the dethatching cartridge won't be able to reach. It will also cut stolons or rhizomes to promote growth in spreading type grasses, which can be a great thing for your lawn to help thicken it up. Also, if you're planning to overseed after this process, scarifying will make a perfect seed bed for your grass seed to germinate in. I use this attachment when doing my renovation and you could tell perfectly where the blades cut right into the soil because the seeds started germinating in perfect rows cut by the scarifier. Also, if you have a lot of moss buildup, this is a great tool to help remove that. The one downside to scarifying is that it won't pull out as much dead grass and material as the dethatching cartridge will. But it'll definitely still pull up some, it just won't get it all. Lastly, we'll talk about power raking. Power rakes are essentially trying to accomplish the same thing as dethatching, except they are usually gas powered and have metal blades of teeth that look like this. These machines are usually super aggressive and are used to get out large amounts of thatch. But with the affordability of electric dethatching machines these days, I would avoid using these just because they are crazy heavy, expensive to rent, in my opinion, overly aggressive. You can get the job done a lot easier with a smaller machine. If you're planning on dethatching your lawn, I would highly recommend doing it in either the springtime or the fall time if you have cool season grass. Definitely avoid the summer because it can be too stressful for your grass. Now imagine how much water and nutrients are being soaked into all this dead grass that's going to waste. By doing this process, you're gonna save so much money and water. So as you can see, obviously this makes a huge mess and I went over this light. I'm actually gonna go over this a few more times, but you can see how much material comes up. One of the suckiest parts about dethatching is the cleanup. You can either rake this stuff, you can blow it, or you can use a rider and kind of suck everything up. But you're gonna have a lot of material when you're done. Make sure you have somewhere to put it or somewhere to bring it. After you're done with the process of dethatching or any of these other processes, your lawn is gonna look stressed and look pretty beat up. But don't be nervous that you went too far because I promise your grass can handle plenty of pain but I would recommend giving it a nice shot of slow release fertilizer to help it recover after this. You can see one of my favorite slow release fertilizers in this video right here. I'll see you over there. Now get off my lawn.